DreamWorks is one of the most inconsistent studios in mainstream American animation. Ever since their first theatrical film, Ants, back in 1998, the quality of the studio's films has always been a roller coaster, and it has never been consistently good like the Disney Renaissance era, the Golden Age Pixar, or even Studio Ghibli, nor has it been consistently bad or mediocre like Illumination. One day you'll get your Shrek and How to Train Your Dragon, and the next day you'll get your Turbo or Shark Tale. I can see why someone will get upset at a bad DreamWorks film after a streak of masterpieces, but anyone who has been consistently following this studio for a long time would know for a fact that it's not the studio's downfall, because once again, it's DreamWorks. However, it is understandable as to why so many people would hold the studio up to such a high standard because of all the masterpieces they have crafted over 25 years of theatrical animated films. Films such as Shrek, The Prince of Egypt, How to Train Your Dragon, Kung Fu Panda, Megamind, etc. are common examples of some of the studio's finest achievements for reasons that have been talked about forever. Smart voice acting, mesmerizing scores, incredible and diverse art directions, and most importantly, storytelling that is incredibly mature for the family film demographic. Kids can still watch and enjoy these films as much as the adults, however the adults could really appreciate and understand the efforts in these movies, tackling themes such as romance, religion, discovering your life purpose, overcoming imposter syndrome, and finding your inner peace, dealing with trauma, valuing life, being in a war, and so much more topics that make all these films so iconic and memorable. Come 2024, and it's one of the most mixed years for DreamWorks in a long time, we got a Netflix-exclusive film, Orion in the Dark, a film that I have yet to see, but I am aware of its mixed reception, Megamind vs. The Doom Syndicate, and Megamind Rules. It's a prank, bros! Oh, brother, this guy stinks! In terms of theatrical releases, we got Kung Fu Panda 4 back in March, and it is still one of the most disappointing sequels that I have ever seen in theaters. Everything is toned down in terms of writing, the new characters feel generic and boring, the Furious 5 get shafted for no reason, the Chameleon is one of the worst villains in DreamWorks history. Honestly, I could go on for a long time, but I'll save that all in the distant future. Today, I want to talk about an experience and prove the point that DreamWorks can not only redeem themselves very easily after a few really bad duds, but also the fact that you don't need a big budget in modern entertainment productions in order to make a masterpiece. And in 2024's case, that movie I am talking about is of course The Wild Robot. Talking about this film without spoiling it is going to be one of the hardest things because this movie absolutely blew me away in a form where there were tears still rolling down my cheeks as I was walking out of the theater after the credits. Yes, this is one of those animated movies that absolutely shook me, and I cannot stress enough how much of a masterpiece it truly is. Despite my distaste for the studio's performance this year and last year as well, I was still so full of hope and positivity every time a new trailer released, and by the time I sat down to watch it in theaters on opening day, I was so satisfied to get everything I could have possibly wanted from this movie. Despite me being the only one in the theater besides an old couple who was far away from me, I cannot recommend to you enough that you go watch this in theaters as soon as possible because this is one of those movies where watching it on the big screen is the definitive way to experience it. This movie is a prime example of a cinematic masterpiece. The Wild Robot continues the trend of what makes all of the DreamWorks great so beloved while adding its own unique ingredient that makes it stand out from the rest of the studio's catalog. This time we receive one of the most beautiful and sad stories revolving around the found family trope, a trope that I have always adored since I was a kid, and all of that is topped off with gorgeous animation, mesmerizing shots, a breathtaking score, talented voice performances, and a gut-punching emotional core. For starters, this is one of the greatest looking films DreamWorks has ever produced. It shares a similar art style to Puss in Boots The Last Wish, in which there are 3D characters and a hand painted environment, except the wild robot doesn't have any of those frame dropping moments when an action scene takes place. Thankfully the wild robot doesn't need that to look as beautiful as most other modern animated movies. Need I remind you that this movie's budget is 70 million dollars, which is less than Puss in Boots The Last Wish, The Bad Guys, and the flipping Spider-Verse movies. Yet they 
they still managed to pull off breathtaking shots and mesmerizing sequences full of popping colors and aesthetics that really bring out the true beauty of nature and the environment that this film portrays with its art style and presentation. On top of that, the score in this movie composed by Chris Bowers is breathtaking as it automatically reels you into every scene and adds to the beauty of this already gorgeous art style to the point where you feel like you are a part of this fictional world and that is the definition of cinema magic. Speaking of feeling, this may just be one of, if not the most devastating story DreamWorks has ever told. A robot who goes by Roz becomes stranded on an island where she tries to adapt to the environment by communicating with its creatures and replicating their actions slash behavior. However, she is shunned by all the creatures because of how different she is. One stormy night, Roz ends up getting into an accident that ends up killing an entire family of geese, all but one lone gosling who she decides to take into her care named Brightbill. Soon enough, she encounters a fox named Fink, who is also an outcast on the island. He helps Roz and gives her tips on what it's like to be a parent. As Brightbill matures into an adult, he starts to socialize with the island's inhabitants, but he also gets treated unfairly because of how he was raised, which affected the way he communicates with the island's life. As the story progresses, we see a wholesome relationship develop between Roz, Fink, and Brightbill that not only forms a beautiful family, but creates one of the most emotionally strong stories of found family that I have seen in such a long time. Every interaction Roz has in this film, especially with Brightbill, feels genuine and earned, and that is what leads to so many moments she has with him feel so heartbreaking. Remember Sully and Boo's relationship in Monsters, Inc., and how devastating it was to see Sully accidentally scare her, or that heart-wrenching scene towards the end where he is forced to part ways with her? If you cried or came close to crying during those scenes, prepare to do the same with this movie, and all of that emotion is delivered so well by the incredibly talented voice performances this film offers. Lupita Nyong'o gives one of the most unique robot performances I have seen in such a long time. She delivers in a way where you could tell it's a robot voice, but it sounds so similar to a human that it makes the character feel as such, and it's what makes her sympathetic moments work so well. Pedro Pascal does a charming and hilarious job voicing Fink the Fox, doing so well at making the character come off as cunning and wisecracking, while really giving him this calm voice that comes off really well, especially during the character's more somber and sympathetic moments. The same could be said for Kit Connor voicing Brightbill, minus the cunning and wisecracking factor. During the scenes where Brightbill comes to terms with where he came from and how he was raised, you can feel the frustration and grief of having lost his entire birth family and being shunned by almost everyone around him, with the only friends and family he has being Roz and Fink, and when you see him finally succeed, it feels like one of the most satisfying things ever. The voice actors for the animal characters in this movie really do give it their all, and thank goodness because the one thing I was worried about going into this movie is that there will be some annoying characters that either fail at being funny or just there to sell toys, but I am so glad to say that not a single one made me feel that way. This is a movie where every character and small moment feels crucial to the story. There is not one scene where I felt like something was pointless or I thought, did that really need to be in the final cut? I do understand when some people think that the movie could have been trimmed down a bit, but I felt as if this movie really did make full use of its runtime to deliver its story in the best way it could have possibly done so. Every time I felt like it was going to end, it kept going in a way that made sense, and instead of losing my interest, it made me always want to see what happened next. The Wild Robot is an experience where I received everything I could have wanted from an animated movie, and then some. This is without a doubt my favorite animated film of the year so far, and even if it somehow falls out of my number one, it'll definitely be in my top three by the time this year wraps up. I don't know if I'd say it's my favorite movie of the year, but it is definitely in my top five as of now.
I could definitely see it being nominated for Best Animated Feature, and while they're probably not going to happen, I would love this movie to get nominated for other categories such as Best Original Score or Best Adapted Screenplay. I mean, the Oscars have shown signs of giving animation a little more respect within the past two years, plus nominations outside of Best Animated Feature have happened in the past, so I'm at least a little hopeful for that. Putting aside what the Oscars are probably going to think, this is an absolute must-see film that watching it on the big screen is an absolute necessity for your viewing. It's one of the best found family movies I've ever seen on the big screen, and it showcases the beauty in that trope and nature as well in such a mesmerizing way that now would be the perfect time to go see it due to the beautiful fall season that has now just arrived. Easy 10 out of 10 film. I don't know if I'd say it's the best movie of the year so far because Dune Part 2 is still at the top of my list, but it will most likely be in my top 10 movies of the year by the time it's all said and done. Anyways, thank you so much for listening, appreciate the beauty of nature and the world, and keep calm and let life carry you on. Mm -hmm.